Ten seconds. All right. Just off 101 near the San Jose Airport. Anytime's the best time to see for yourself the casino makes it different. Gamer problem? Call 1 800 Gamer. This is San Jose Saber Cats football. Go. Well, for Darren Arbet, the ring is the thing. 15 and 8 as a playoff coach, three championships, an elite team year after year after year. That's what Sabercat football is all about. This is the home opener. They come in at 1 and 0. And moments ago, I sat down with the head coach of the San Jose Sabercats, Darren Arbet. Well, the home opener, you come in at 1 and 0, but you have a bit of an issue at quarterback now. So it looks like Nate Stanley is going to get a shot here. Russ Mickna with a concussion a week ago. Stanley was phenomenal in the second half, but still that puts stress really on the rest of your team, I would think. I think they can handle it. Uh, the guys, they've been great. They play hard every day. They go hard in meetings in the weight room. I'm excited for uh, Nate tonight. He's really earned it. He's been phenomenal in practice. Second half of that game, I thought he did a tremendous job last week. I'm excited for him to play. You know, the pass rush becomes a huge issue in arena football. The problem when you play Philadelphia is they three-step everything and they don't give you much time to get there. But this is, you know, game two, young part of the season. Assess your D-line and the kind of pass rush. When the Sabercats have won rings, it's when the pass rush and the D-line have been real solid. I like the D-line. They're real strong. Uh, they can come at you a lot of different ways from the middle. We have a couple of good outside guys in Terrence Carter and Luis Vasquez. Uh, Francis Mock and Jason Stewart, I think, are the best in the business. So I really like that front. Cleveland Thomas doesn't ever seem to slow down, and he gives you an opportunity with that defensive secondary to kind of put people in the right position, make big plays. Tell me about Cleveland here. Is, is he getting better like wine? He just ages better year after year? He's a heartbeat of this team. He's a leader. Everybody follows him. Uh, he just does a great job, and you're right. He's getting better with time. Uh, and it amazes me week in, week out. He also does it at practice, Bob. He just loves to play the game. You know, I think the Sabercats calling card in the red zone has always been the ability to run the ball. In arena football, it sounds odd, but you've had the offensive line to do it. J.J. Payne, the ball carrier now this year. What about Payne inside the five, the ability to get into the end zone? Tell me about your confidence in him as a runner. I have a lot. He's impressed me, and I'm very impressed the way he runs the football and does a nice job making people miss. Uh, has great vision, and he does a tremendous job getting his shoulders square and getting through the hole. Now, do you have the uh, the fat package with the pH, that kind of fat, as far as when you go heavy-duty jumbo and every lineman tells you, Coach, I have the hands, throw me the ball. You know, we'll be able to put something together for you, have one of those big guys come in and uh, get in that two-point stance and shuffle down the line. In terms of special teams, Nick Pertwee comes back, very solid at the kicker. You have to have it not only for field position, making PATs. You don't attempt a lot of field goals, but you trust him on the short ones. Made one last week. Um, kick return, though, that can be such a critical position. Who handles the kick returns, and how are your special teams in terms of the return game? I like our return game. Uh, David Hyland did a nice job last week. We also have Reggie Gray, who's the best in the business in my mind. and um, I can put him in there, or we can go with David Hyland. We feel comfortable with both of them. Philadelphia has had the Sabercats numbers the last couple of times. I know I talked to you this week, and it was Philly won, and they talked about it, and Clint Dozell let people know about it. Is that a little extra special, even though it's week two? When I think of Arizona, Philly, Sabercats, you think of the, the real quality teams in the league. Is this one you kind of circle on the calendar? Yeah, you know, you have to be excited about this game. They beat us really good. I mean, it wasn't even close. Uh, they beat us every time we've played them since we've come back in this new league. And uh, it's an opportunity tonight for us. The guys understand what this game means to all of us. And they did it at home last year. All right, good luck with the, uh, the home opener week two. Good seeing you as well. And uh, we'll see how you're able to work with this year's edition of the Sabercats. Off to 1-0 start. We'll make it 2-0. Yeah, thanks, Bob. That is Darren Arbet, the head coach. Steve Pappen will rejoin me. We'll look at the keys to the game, the Sabercats, in Philadelphia on the way on KMBR 1050.
Mariani's Inn and Restaurant is the perfect destination for business or pleasure. Mariani's Inn has been providing high quality lodging and dining in a relaxing home like atmosphere. Mariani's Restaurant specializes in Italian and American cuisine. Come to the bar for happy hour and enjoy live entertainment on Friday uh, and Saturday nights. Yep. Mariani's yep. also caters off site events so they can bring the delicious bounty to your location. Come to Mariani's where you're treated like family. Visit www.mariani's.com for information about everything Mariani's. Mariani's has to offer. Mariani's Inn and Restaurant, a Santa Clara tradition. Do you own a digital camera or computer? If you answered yes, then it's time for you to check out PNY. For over 25 years, PNY Technologies has been providing solutions for your computer and digital imaging needs. Flash memory cards, USB drives, PC memory upgrade modules, solid state drives, high speed HDMI cables, consumer graphics cards, and professional workstation graphics cards. Stop by your local Fry's Electronics store for deals on select PNY products or visit PNY.com for more information. PNY, make life simple. KNBR 1050, all the sports talk you will ever need. KTCT San Mateo, a cumulus station. In between this. Steps back, goes up, got fouled, and banked it all! This. this this is as good as it gets. Tim and Tom talk yo-yos. It's like that ball's a yo-yo. Well, that time the yo-yo came off the finger. He was trying to walk the dog and the dog took off. <laughs> okay, uh, coming back Tim after this. Tom. That is very impressive Get yo-yo trick knowledge right there. <laughs> Bringing you all the action from Oracle on KNBR 680. The winter season is upon us, and we all know the forecast. There are lots of umbrellas that yes. will be unfolded this weekend. Rain. Curry with shots up again. Thompson, he knocks down another triple. Rain across North America. Curry shoots a three. Got it from the left wing. Let's just say this. You will be seeing a lot of rain. Making it rain on your radio. Warriors basketball on KNBR 680. This is San Jose Sabercats football. Go. And we get ready for Philadelphia and the Sabercats. Bob Fitzgerald with Steve Pappen, Kirsten Fairchild down on the sideline. And all right, Nathan Stanley. You got to watch him for half a game against Portland. Uh, I thought he, he looked pretty composed at 8 of 14, threw for three touchdowns, did have the one pick. But I would think that this is a big opportunity here because now you start winning games, you know, people get injured, you take over someone's place, and then you kind of go from there. I hate to be the, the negative side of this, but watching him last week, he's better than a lot of quarterbacks in this league right now. What he did last week, he auditioned for everybody else. If Russ McNa comes back and's healthy and, and, and continues, he auditioned himself for the future to set himself up to play. Also, if you beat a team like Philadelphia, which San Jose hasn't been able to do in your home opener night and your first actual start, you start Wally Pippen it. You start thinking, uh oh, who Russ got to look over his shoulder and you know, I'm not the coach, I don't know what's going on, but I know Coach Arbet wants wins. And if this guy comes in and he's a winner and wins, he's gonna position himself to play a lot of football games. You know, we, we, we talked about, okay, here's the roster, here's Philadelphia, here's what we have going on, but having Omar Smith come back as the offensive coordinator, I mean, that's kind of an interesting wrinkle, and, you know, he'd been the D coordinator in Arizona. He's got a, a ton of rings. He played for San Jose. It, it's, um, it's a different upgrade, but it's a guy very familiar, and you weaken one of your major rivals. It's an upgrade that... If anybody or anybody would want, if that would be the upgrade you would want. I believe not only did they get great players, the number one asset or the number one up, uh, asset that, that they did this year was signing Omar Smith. Not only did you weaken Arizona, you brought a guy in that's a, a hard worker. He was a defensive guy. Now he's doing the offense. He's got great tenacity. He's going he's gonna to work hard and get the best possible that he can out of these players. And I think if – you look at the whole team in the offseason. Signing Omar Smith was probably the biggest and best move Coach Arbet did. And in terms of kick returns, are you going to let Reggie Gray do it? I know he'd been dinged up a little bit. You're going to let Highland do it? You did it as well as anybody who's ever played the game. What do you think? I think he's going to go with Highland. I think until they get Reggie Gray to where he is 100%. And, and if you talk to Coach Arbet, he, he believes Reggie Gray is the best in the Arena League at doing it right now. 
and Highlands 1B. You know, he, he believes Highlands just as good, maybe not as explosive, but I don't think he wants to risk Reggie on a kickoff return when he doesn't have to. So the Sabercats in their home green, Philadelphia in road white, and really I, I would have to call it North Carolina blue mm -hmm. in, in terms of the uniforms. Sabercats are going to kick it off, and we've been doing this a long time, Steve. When you really think about it, the Sabercats starting in 1995, and here we are in 2014. Got them amazing. Yeah, it is. I mean, when you look at all the other leagues, whether it be basketball, football, the, the spring leagues, the overseas arena has still been doing it. And the thing that's amazing to me is when you look at all the franchises in arena that have came and went, and the Sabercat has been a steady constant for all these years. So Nick Pertwee will put it at the goal line, swing the right foot into it, high end over end kick. Robert Red will take it off the net, take it out of his own end of the five. Little cut back to the right sideline, out to the 10-yard line, and then brought down right there. Good sound special teams tackle by Jason Willis. Watch. So three guys blocking and a fullback. will be three guys rushing and a plugger or linebacker. Three wide receivers in motion and then a quarterback and Dan Rodabaugh. Out of Miami of Ohio, the 27-year-old, four years in the league, 6'3", 230, but I don't think you have to throw the deep balls much with Philly because it's kind of seven yards, eight yards, nine yards, dump, 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 and in a 50-yard field, you move right down. And that's the way Cl Coach Dozell is going to do it. He's going to let his guy just make the easy throws all the way down the field. They'll move Ryan McDaniel in motion left. You can go forward motion in arena football. McDaniel on a little go route and incomplete. Cleveland Thomas right with him. You know, Fitz, you knew that was going to happen. I mean, Cleveland Thomas last week started on the out on the backside. They had Fontenet in the middle. What they do with, with Cleveland is matchups. Right here, they put him in the middle. What does Philadelphia do? That was probably a short route, but they realized, hey, I got press coverage, so I'm going to convert it, and right about just overthrew him. Try to go down yep. the field then? Because you, you, you don't base a lot of your throws against Cleveland to win long. You take the chance when this chance is given. Anthony Tiger Jones in motion left, trips to the left on second and 10. Radabaugh throwing underneath to McDaniel at the 14 and just shoved into the wall. Ken Fontenet was there. And I think also, if you're playing DB, okay, second and 10, give up four yards. Now you bring up third down. That's what you want in arena football, as many third downs as possible. But there is a time occasionally to try to jump that route and see if you can come up with a big play. Oh, and in and, and, and San Jose, they teach that. They want you to jump. They don't want to let you sit back. Even if the, and if the guy hits and goes, they tell you to put him over the wall and hit him. But I guarantee you, especially Highland, he's going to jump a few routes in tonight's ball game, and I look for him to possibly get one. So third and seven, the ball at the 13-yard line, just underway with trips to the right. Right about dropping back to pass, looking right sideline, caught for the first down. And Larry Brackens at 6'5", 225 pounds, gets out to the 21-yard line, and he is a monster receiver. And the one thing about Brackens, I mean, he's so big, he's physical. Him and Cleveland for years now have had this little Deion Sanders, Andre Risen, or whatever you want to call it, type of matchup. And it's going to be interesting tonight to see because he does like to talk. He does like to get in Cleveland's face, and we all know Cleveland is humble as can be, but the only person that I've ever seen in arena football take Cleveland out of his game is Larry Brackens. First and 10, Philly, opening possession of the ball game. 12-23 in the clock, spinning. Trips to the left, McDaniel the motion man, right about looking for McDaniel, he's got a first down, and Fontenet shoves him out of bounds at about the 18-yard line. And what we're seeing from, Phil uh, from Philadelphia is what we've seen for the last five years. Three steps in throw, three steps in throw, and then once he gets inside the 20, you'll throw a little screen to your fullback, you'll try and take a shot with Larry Brackens, and then you'll start trying to give it to Ross. But the one thing about Dozell, he just wants to win. He doesn't need to score 90 points. He wants to take three steps and make high percentage throws. So Larry Brackens, the large one at 6'5", wide left. Tiger Jones slot left, and McDaniel inside him in motion. Hand off right up the middle, Derek Ross, 15-10-5. Touchdown, Philadelphia. So Derek Ross has every rushing record there is in league history, and he rumbles in from 18 yards out. And, and that's just what I talked about. Once you pass the 20, now you look for your screen game, your run game, and all they did right there was kind of like a little trap play in the outdoor game. Ross is going to cut back, and I mean, I, I don't think I've ever seen an arena football player go in from that far untouched. And so Carlos Martinez... We'll put it at the 10, an 18-yard PAT, only a 9-foot wide opening. The left footer 
Snap and set down, and the kick is up and good. And so Philadelphia, a team that has had the Sabercats number over the years, marches right down the field and leads 7-0, 11 minutes remaining in the first quarter. Timeout on the field on KNBR 1050. KNBR 1050. Razer is the world leader in high-performance gaming hardware. A CNET Best of CES okay, Sports Award good. winner and CES Hot Stuff Award winner, Razer provides gamers with the unfair advantage of cutting-edge technology and award-winning design. Head wow, over to any hurts. Fry's location and pick up your favorite Razer gear, like the Razer Death Adder Gaming Mouse or the Razer Black Widow Ultimate Gaming Keyboard. And don't forget to check us out at RazerZone.com and like us at Facebook.com slash Razer. Razer. Four games. Gamers by gamers. Tune in to Comcast Sportsnet on Friday, March 21st at 4.30 p.m. for Sabercats Weekly. Catch up on the latest Sabercats news, including interviews with head coach Darren Arbett, players of the week, and more. The Sabercats open up their home schedule on Sunday, March 23rd at 7.30 p.m. at the SAP Center God, against the Philadelphia sense. Soul. For ticket seconds. information, call 408-673-3400 or visit thesanjosesabercats.com. Check your local listings for channel information. Be the roar. You've dialed into San Jose Sabercats football. Go. 11 minutes remaining in the first quarter. Philadelphia up 7-0. And you answered the question in the pregame, but it, David Highland set deep to receive. And so Reggie Gray, I mean, you know, you were a premier kick returner, Steve. If Is it like a toothache if you got a hamstring or something where it just, it just doesn't feel right and it's one where, you know, one – burst or something all of a sudden you tweak it or all of a sudden you know you re-injure it you gotta be real careful well i think it with a hamstring it's it's, it's interesting because you never know when it's going to go and i think with hamstrings we tend to baby them a little bit more than you do any other injury so carlos martinez at his own goal line line drive end over end into the soft net and here comes highland at the five the ten a good shot. he lost the football and then recovered it at the eight yard line Came all the way out to the 10, took a big hit, fumbled it backwards, but then very quickly on top of the ball, averting disaster. And so the Sabercats set up shop. First and 10 at their own eight-yard line, and here comes Nathan Stanley out of southeast Louisiana, the 25-year-old rookie, and he looks the part, 6'5", 215. Yeah, and I mean, he has a cannon. I mean, he can throw this ball with the best of them, and I look for Coach Smith early on to kind of be like Clint Dozell, Coach Dozell, where it's going to be three yards, let him get comfortable, and just get a rhythm with his receivers. And I think of all the years of Mark Greeb, then you had Aaron Garcia briefly, Russ Mikta. The Sabercats have not ever really gone with an inexperienced quarterback. Yeah, not at all. They'll move Willis in motion on first down. And Stanley throwing it downfield and overthrowing an open Reggie Gray. You know, there's an accuracy component, there's a knowledge component, there's a butterfly and jitter component. It's all there for a guy making his first start. And what an, what an idiot I look like. I just said he's going to take an easy throw and get an <laughs> easy completion, and his first one is 30 yards down the field. But that's what Coach Smith is going to bring to this team. He's going to bring that aggressive type style of offense. So Philadelphia up 7-0, 940 remaining in the first. Three wide receivers to the right. Willis in motion. Stanley. Out in the flat and in and out of the hands of Reggie Gray. He had room to run, would have had the first down. And he kind of threw the fastball there. That's the other issue, too. If you're amped up, instead of just a little out route for about seven, eight yards, you're fired 80 miles an hour, and it's an incompletion. There were two negatives on that one. The, fa the fastball came hot and heavy, and I think Reggie realized he was open to run for a touchdown, took his eyes off the ball and started to run before he actually caught the ball. So that's something where it's getting used to. I mean, he's only had a – few days to actually throw to these guys because he has been the backup throwing to the other receivers. So a little bit of adversity right here. Third and ten on the opening possession for San Jose trailing 7-0. Stanley pumping once looking deep for Gray again and overthrowing him. And if we've seen anything from Nathan Stanley on all three throws they've all been the fastball. And if you have someone that wide open put some air under it let him run to the football. And that's exactly right. If you look if you look back to last week in, in Portland his first, I would say, five throws, three of them were just what we've seen today. Long, high, and a lot of that fits is because when you're at practice outside, you can throw those balls because the wind, the variables. Inside, you throw that same ball you throw outside at the Sabercat practice, it's going to sail, and the first three balls have sailed on him. 
So fourth and ten. Sabercats don't like to kick. They're going to go for it at their own eight-yard line. Big momentum swing early in the ball game. Stanley back to pass. Pumping, firing, caught for the first down. Out to the 23-yard line. And Jason Willis with a major conversion. And Nathan Stanley just showed me something right there. Well, the reason why that was a completion and a conversion was the offensive line. Gave him all day to throw. He stood tall in the pocket. Willis is going to run a dig from the backside across the middle, and Stanley did not hesitate and come off of him not one time. He stayed with Willis the whole time because of the protection. Got to find a safety blanket every once in a while. Nathan Willis, or Nathan Stanley finding Jason Willis, combining the two there for the <laughs> completion on first down. The pitch toss, J.J. Payne to the 25. Little cutback. And then into Philadelphia territory about the 22-yard line. What do you use the run game for in the middle of the field? Does that take a little bit of the, the steam off the pass rush? Yeah, that's exactly what it does. You figure a lot of teams like we saw with, with Philadelphia, once they cross midfield, their next play was a run to the fullback. So what Omar's trying to do here is he's trying to catch them off guard, maybe not with a screen or maybe not trying to go for the end zone, just to throw them off from the pass rush standpoint of keeping them on their heels. So second and six, seven minutes remaining in the first quarter. Philly up 7-0. Sabercats at the sole 22. And firing to the nine-yard line. Rod Harper's going to drag tacklers with him. And a touchdown. The late signal. But Rod Harper at 6'1", 205. He has put together, caught it at the nine, sprinted to the three, and dragged DBs alongside. And the Sabercats are a PAT away from tying the game. And again, that was the offensive line giving Stanley time fits. He had all day, and Philadelphia was a blown coverage. Rod Harper, his man, came inside on Willis. He was wide open, and that was the one thing that I worried about Stanley is being able to come off of his primary and find his secondary receiver, and he did that. So Pertwee on for the PAT. Now, I can't say the PhD has the PAT. I don't want to start doing that. There's too many of those in this game. But, yes, the doctor is in, put it that way. With 6.15 remaining in the first quarter, we're even at 7. Time out of the field. You're listening to Sabercats football on KMBR 1050. Deciding between a new PC or tablet, why not? I think get Arena both? needs the to go to Asus CFL Rules. AIO is the perfect two-in-one PC you only and get three tablet downs. device that lets you experience make it a lot the best of both worlds. Because you don't With kick anyway, so fourth down, you're going to go for it anyway. Right. If you only so had three downs, it would make it. You're used to uh, a touchscreen tablet. It'd make it a little more interesting. getting the power you expect from a full-fledged PC. For tablet mobility, simply lift the display from its dock to instantly transform it into a wireless tablet to take around the house. Learn more today at Transformer AIO. Asus.com. Transformer AIO. Choice is a beautiful thing. In almost any business environment, there are many opportunities to save money. Your company can be more resourceful by using Toshiba technology from Zoom Imaging Solutions. By using Toshiba technology, Zoom can have your business running more efficiently. I'm Gary Johnson, president of Zoom Imaging Solutions. Give us a call and we'll show you just how much money you can save by combining your copy, fax, and printing needs. 916-369-6526 or visit zoomcopiers.com. You're dialed into San Jose Sabercats football. Go. Bob Fitzgerald, Steve Pappen, Kirsten Fairchilds hanging out at HP Pavilion. And so for San Jose, fourth down at their own eight-yard line, fourth and ten, they convert and then move down the field. And I think for Nathan Stanley, that's got to be like the big sigh of relief. Oh, yeah, because his first couple of throws were Aaron. He was long. He was hot and heavy. To be able to get that fourth down gave him some confidence. To be able to come off of Willis and find Harper gave him more confidence. I look for him to, to, to really settle down now. Pertwee. End over end kick, Robert Red off the iron. That's loose in the end zone. That's a live football. It's still bouncing around, and Philadelphia able to recover. And Robert Red able to get back there. As at that time, that can be a really dangerous play, and it's a live ball. You know, you don't have the. It's got to go the ten yards, but once it is down there, a net recovery. That's the ultimate freebie. It's a stop. It's a score. It's the whole bit. And as a returner, I can tell you firsthand. When I played, a lot of it, a lot easier because I had three or four big guys running down, so you had more time to actually field the ball. Now you have eight, seven or eight fast guys coming at you. Your heart rate starts pumping, and you start panicking a little bit once that ball hits the ground. Yeah, you can tell that Steve Pappen's been in that. <laughs> I mean, just for a second, he was sweating. 
So on first down at the two yard line, Radaba a go route and incomplete to Ryan McDaniel. We check in with Kirsten Fairchild. Kirsten, it, it was Derek Ross with the first Philly touchdown and he's all everything in terms of fullbacks in this league. He has already off to a blistering and bruising season. In that loss to Arizona last week, he had 12 carries for 46 yards. Six of those carries were for touchdowns. That is a team record for Philadelphia. Yeah, man, what a weapon. You know, you said, Pap, even in the 20 or the 15, and this is where, hey, make it a long field for Philadelphia. You give them a problem here. On second and 10, Radaba again trying to play a little pitch and catch. And, you know, these go routes, Cleveland Thomas is running right with Brackens, and that's so much different than we've seen Dozell with these little stop seven yarders. It's third and 10 right now. Well, I think what, what he's trying to do is they're trying to come out and play. San Jose's coming out playing man to man. Cleveland's catching the receiver at the line of scrimmage. They're tiring him out. Did you notice the first receiver compared to the second receiver? Second was it was Bracken. And I think that's what he's doing is like, let's just keep running go routes. The receivers have been somewhat open. The balls have been a little bit fur further, but I think they're they're going to try and tire Cleveland out. All right, Tiger Jones is going to be the motion man. Three wide receivers to the right. Jones and Cleveland battling. Radabon third down and complete again. He tried to find McDaniel on a crossing route. Sabercat pass rush is getting there a little bit too. Well, they got they got three guys coming every play, and you, then you throw Mock in there, that fourth guy. I mean, these guys really want to get after it and make something happen, especially knowing he's only going to three-step. So that, now their motor's a little bit more amped up to try and get there for the three-step. Big defensive opportunity. Fourth and ten for Philadelphia at their own two-yard line. We're even at seven with the clock spinning with 345 remaining in the first. Tight formation, left hash. And just McDaniel, ISO to the right. Radaba with a flag down. And they stop the play before it gets going. A little pushing and shoving in the end zone. But we will wait on the hanky. Scott Campbell is our official. And it's a Philly false start. So from the two to the one with the half the distance here. And they blew a perfect opportunity right there. They had, a, they had a chance on that one to, to, to get the deep ball. McDaniel had kind of slipped Cleveland to the outside because he came from the boundary into the field, and he had got by Cleveland for about two or three yards. So fourth and 11. The ball at the one-yard line. Radaba under pressure, firing deep, incomplete. Incomplete. He wanted Tiger Jones, a Sabercat defense. Comes up with a stop, and San Jose takes over on the one-yard line of Philadelphia. I understand the logic. I understand Cleveland's taking the, the motion. You threw four consecutive go routes that fits weren't even close. At some point, okay, let's settle down, get a first down, give myself some room. I mean, you got to take your hat off right now to the Sabercats front four for putting pressure and Cleveland Thomas because four times in a row, five if you include the penalty, he ran deep, and not one time did any of the receivers catch the pass. Yeah, so there's 309 remaining in the first. But this is the type of thing that you say, wait a minute, it's a turnover on Dallas, but on the one-yard line, you're almost giving away a touchdown. So we'll step away here. Sabercats knocking on the door would be the understatement. Even at seven, timeout on the field on KMBR 1050. Purello's Restaurant has been family owned and operated since 1972. We specialize in authentic Italian cuisine with the convenience of a full bar. Good for families, private dining, and corporate events. Private banquet facilities available for up to 180 guests. Fresh seafood steaks and chops along with gluten-free options as well. Just Purello's run the ball. Is located oh, just run at the 638 ball. 638 El Camino Real in Santa Clara, one block from you Santa can come Clara back University. Here. You can look us up on the web at Purello's.com or call 408-984 0414. You're dialed into San Jose Sabercats football. Go. Even at seven with 309 remaining in the first, and first and goal from the one yard line for the Sabercats. Now, are you going to let Stanley fool around with this in terms of throwing the ball, Pap, or is it JJ Payne time? I will put it to you this way I would give it to JJ Payne four times in a row. I would just, because now you're going to demoralize. Philadelphia. I mean, down here with the with the rookie quarterback in his first start, this close, 
I'd be worried about that ball bouncing off of the net because he's been throwing it a little hot and letting Philadelphia get a cheap interception. I'm going to tell my offensive line, if we're the best in this league, we're going to put the ball on the ground four straight times. So first down at the one, give it to Payne up the middle, and the Philadelphia line surge equal to the task. T.J. Langley and Teddy Jennings there. That'll bring up second down. No need for Stan leaving to run back over to Omar. Get right back up on the ball, and we let's do it again. I'm gonna now. What you might see here is maybe Jason Willis or Huey Whitaker's in the ball game. A bounce at a three, at a bounce at a four. But I think if you're Coach Smith, you got to run this ball, and you want to demoralize Philadelphia and, and and prove your worth inside the red zone. Jordan Mudge at center, Bussy to the left, Wrangling to the right, JJ Payne the fullback, Huey Whitaker in motion left on second and goal from the one. They give it to the quarterback and Stanley. Spinning into the end zone, touchdown, Sabercats. I mean, we're going single wing old school before they had face masks. <laughs> Line up, and the quarterback sneak for the touchdown. And that was about 300 pounds worth of quarterback because J.J. Payne got behind Stanley and kind of forced him, rode him inside with a good push to get him inside the end zone. So Pertwee on for the PAT. Sabercats trying to double up Philadelphia. Snap, set, kick, is up and good. And so for the Sabercats, 14-7 with a minute 53 remaining in the first. Defensive stop, and then the one-yard quarterback sneak. San Jose on top of touchdown. Timeout on the field on KMBR 1050. Is there really life after eight in San Jose? Casino Matrix answers that question with a definitive yes. Casino Matrix is Silicon Valley's premier 24-7 entertainment destination. Play Vegas-style games like Blackjack and Baccarat or join a poker table. Catch the game and a great meal and drinks at the Zone 8 Sports Bar and Grill. And hang with your friends or make some new ones at the Epic Bar. Just off 101 near the San Jose Airport. Anytime's the best time to see for yourself the Casino Matrix difference. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Razer is the world leader in high-performance gaming hardware. A CNET Best of CES People's Voice Award winner and CES Hot Stuff Award winner, Razer provides gamers with the unfair advantage of cutting-edge technology and award-winning design. Head over to any Fry's location and pick up your favorite Razer gear, like the Razer Death Adder Gaming Mouse or the Razer Black Widow Ultimate Gaming Tank. And don't forget to check us out at RazerZone.com and like us at Facebook.com slash Razer. Razer, four games. Gamers by gamers. This is San Jose Sabercats football. Yep. Easiest stat line ever. A one play, one yard drive. Okay, it was a two play because <laughs> it took two runs, but the takeover on the one yard line, and now as Nick Pertwee gets set to kick it off, the question, Pap, is whether or not Philadelphia adjusts. Just what you said, go route, go route, go route. You turn it over on your one yard line at some point. You got to get first downs and move the sticks a little bit. Well, that's why Cleveland has been so good in this league for so long. You figure, I'm going to take my chance. He's not the fastest. He's not the quickest. I'm going to take my chance with go routes, and he just plays it so well. And if, if you're Philadelphia, you better change your uh, modus of operation. So Pertwee off the crossbar. Robert Red out of his own end zone at the five and spun down to the eight-yard line. Good special teams tackle there. And anytime you see a large body slamming into people, it, it, it's either Rod Harper or Huey Whitaker. <laughs> I mean, they, they are the old agile, hostile, and mobile. <laughs> they take pride in it. And, and yeah, they last, do. Last week, they had problems. They struggled in Portland. That was Portland's only offense or per, Portland's only bright spot to their first game was their special teams. Their kick return did a great job. And I'm sure Coach Jarnigan, I actually went out to practice this week, and they were actually practicing a little bit longer on the kickoff cover team. So first and ten, Philly at their own nine. Bracken's in motion. Right about a little underneath route and spun down at the 19 yard line. They go to Vakion Lacey. V apostrophe K E O N. I've called a lot of sports for a lot of years and never run into a Vakion before. Hey, th today's parents, the names they come up with, I, <laughs> I mean, I don't get it. It'll be a nine yard gain with the spot of the ball. So second and one. Philly at their own 18. Sabercats up 14-7. And off to Ross up the middle, and he bowls his way across the 20 to the 22-yard line. Derek Ross is from Tarleton State at 31 years of age. And what makes him such a premier fullback? 
Well, because I think he he has that – he's able to block. So you can't really rush him and do things. And then I think he's deceptively faster than what he is. For a large guy. And he's, he's big. That's, that was it. He's big. And I think what Coach Dozell does is get linemen that cater to his style of running. Could be the final play of the first quarter. On first down, Philly at their own 22. Dan Radabaugh dropping back. Flush to the pocket left and just fires it into the stands. Then a flag comes well after the play. Now, this may be uncatchable. That, that ball was thrown 15 yards over the receiver's head. So we have a flag of the 16, and he threw it 10 yards out of bounds. And so the Scott Campbell getting the officiating crew together here. Now, you could say Radabaugh threw it away because maybe someone was being held. And here's the call. And they will pick up the flag. Good call. That's a good job with everybody saying, all right, hey, I had a hold, but no, I had something in terms of uncatchable. And they should spin the clock, and that will do it for the quarter. Let's do the math. Every, <laughs> every deep ball, incomplete. Short stuff, he's perfect right now. San Jose's doing what they want to do as far as they want to make him throw deep. End of the first quarter, Sabercats up 14-7, trying to win with Nathan Stanley, the backup quarterback. So far, so good through one. It's San Jose up a touchdown on KMBR 1050. Brian, when did you start this company? 25 years ago, 1989. I was in the drive through line at McDonald's. You're making that up. Ahead of me was a pickup truck full of junk, and I said to myself, I could do that. You being real with me? A week later, I had a $700 pickup truck and four big ideas. Number one, make it easy. All the customer has to do is point. Number two, make it affordable. No one is more efficient than us. Number three, protect the environment. We recycle nearly two-thirds of all we pick up. And now number four, always hire happy people. Everyone loves our attitude. Magic happens when you call 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Your house gets bigger. The air smells sweeter. And music fills the air. Junk magically disappears. All you have to do is point. Call 1-800-GOT-JUNK or visit 1-800-GOT-JUNK.com. Deciding between a new PC or tablet, why not get both? The Asus Transformer AIO is the perfect 2-in-1 PC and tablet device that lets you experience the best of both worlds. With pre-installed Windows 8 and Android Jelly Bean, surf the web and play games the way you're used to on a touchscreen tablet while still getting the power you expect from a full-fledged PC. For tablet mobility, simply lift the display from its dock to instantly transform it into a wireless tablet to take around the house. Learn more today yeah, at you can hit a promo if you want. Oh, no, okay, no problem. Transformer AIO. Choice is a beautiful thing. T-minus 60 seconds and counting. All systems are good. Every second of every minute of every day, we grow closer to this. We have a high drive in the deep center field. Hit the wall! Goodbye! Home run, Buster Posey! The Giants 2014 season begins They're coming exactly back. seven days on KNBR 16. Stand by. You're dialed into San Jose Sabercats football. Yep. Beginning in the second quarter with the Sabercats up 14-7. Bob Fitzgerald, Steve Pappen, Kirsten Fairchild's down on the sideline. And Kirsten, Cleveland Thomas is 35 years of age, but the way he's tracking down receivers, you would have no idea that he's not a 22-year-old rookie. Yeah, you're so right, Bob. I mean, it is amazing. Not only that he continues to play, but the level he plays, the intensity he brings, he really seems to not have missed a step. And Darren Arbett, Steve, said Cleveland, the heartbeat of the team, the Hall of Famer. Radabov, a, a miscommunication, throwing it deep into the end zone, incomplete. Vakion Lacey. Hooked up at the 15, and Radabaugh thought he was on a go route. And so, as you said, Pap, I mean, he's 4 of 11 now, and all these deep balls, none of them have been completed. Well, what happens, Fitz, is all week in practice, you're watching film. Oh, Cleveland's 35. Oh, he can't run. So all these young guys think they don't give the respect where it's due. I'm going to run by him. I'm going to run by him. And this one, I think, Lacey realized I'm not going to run by him and hooked up, and Radabaugh thought he had him deep and no go. So third and 10 now for Philly at their own 22. Sabercats up 14-7. Radaba again, another go route down the sideline and incomplete. 
And the hand fighting, you want to keep picking on Cleveland Thomas, knock yourself out. I thought you and I were calling an arena football game, not one-on-ones in practice. <laughs> this, is, this is all this is, is one-on-ones. They're sending a different receiver at Cleveland every single time, and all they're doing is running streak routes. What, what guys do in practice when you, when you when coach calls one-on-one, everybody wants to run streaks or posts. And so far, I want to say he's, he has to be 0 for about 7 or 8 right now in that ball. Well, we've already had a couple 4,000 in this game. Fourth and 10 now for Philly at their own 22. They're already down a touchdown. Trips to the left. Right about looking left, looking deep, and a coverage bust, and Tiger Jones will walk in for a touchdown. Formationally, that was an I got him, you take him, and the next thing you know, Tiger Jones is behind the defense by himself for the score. And if you're Coach Walker right there, you can't be mad. You can be mad because your guys blew the coverage, but you can't be mad when you let somebody score on a blown coverage because up until that point, the secondary and the front has been getting to Philadelphia and doing what they're supposed to do. That one's a blown coverage. You go back after this PAT, talk about it, figure it out so it doesn't happen again. And for Philly, they don't make it there. It's a disaster. Instead, they convert on fourth down, and even better, they get a touchdown. Carlos Martinez on for the PAT. And the kick is up and good. So 12.52 remaining in the first half. We're tied at 14. Sabercats home opener on KMBR 1050. More tech, more deals, more savings at Fry's Electronics. Don't wait. Go to Fry's.com slash deals to see hundreds of great tech items at great prices. And you can review and purchase your selections from your computer, laptop, tablet, or smartphone. And to get personalized, shh, secret. Promo codes. Go to Fry's.com slash sign me up. This week, go online and check out the brilliant performance of Lenovo's notebook with quad-core processor. This notebook features a 15.6-inch full HD screen display. It comes with 6 gigabytes of memory and spacious 1 terabyte hard drive. Get yours now at Fry's. Guaranteed low price of $578. Visit Fry's today and see the stylish Asus notebook with Intel Core i5 processor. It has a crystal clear touch screen with 13.3-inch display, making it perfect for work in laptop mode or for entertainment in the unique stand mode. It comes with 4 gigabytes gigabytes of memory and a 128 gigabyte solid state drive now fries guaranteed low Ten price seconds. of 998 dollars more tech more deals and more savings at fries.com slash deals guaranteed you dialed into san jose saber cats football go 12 52 remaining in the first half for even at 14 philadelphia Converting on fourth down and a busted coverage. And Dan Radaba able to find Tiger Jones in his sixth year out of Louisville. Tiger Jones played a long time in this league. And I think sometimes the veterans read, oh, wait, this DB did this. I've got an opportunity to take advantage of it. He's played a lot of football. I mean, I remember when I coached in the Arena 2, the AF2, he was down there. He got brought up. And, I mean, he's been a staple in this league for years now. And he is one of the veterans that – can see the coverage and I guess what, what, what he probably saw fits is oh wow number eight's not on me please throw me the ball now because number eight has been with, with him wherever he's went so the Sabercats will get the ball back Kirsten Fairchilds how about Nathan Stanley starting did you talk to any of the players as far as Mikna being out and Stanley playing I mean how are the Sabercats dealing with that well, I, I didn't have a chance to talk to the players, but head coach Darren Arbett has so much confidence in Nathan Stanley. He says his best characteristic is that he has ice water in his veins. He hasn't seen that from a rookie in the AFL for a very long time. Martinez kicking it deep. Highland out of his own end zone at the 5. Looking for a block at the 10. Makes somebody miss at the 15, and David Highland all the way out to the 18-yard line. So a nice cut back there, and anytime you have a 50-yard field, and you cut it not quite in half, but you're not in the shadow of your own end zone. That works out. And I, I think that's where I asked Aaron at the beginning of the game, Pap. Look, it's a pressure on your O-line, your D-line, your secondary, your receivers, special team, anything to help a quarterback in his first start. And that's exactly what, what's going on right there with Highland. I mean, Coach Omar Smith now can open up his playbook on the 18-yard line opposed to being inside the five. You know, now Stanley is able to stand back in that pocket and, and decipher where he wants to go with the ball. So Reggie Gray, the slot man, motion left. Harper also to the left. Looking for Gray deep, and Stanley that time did one thing well, and that he threw kind of a balloon ball for Gray to run underneath it. Problem is he gauged the distance a little too long. That'll bring up second down. It looked a little bit like Reggie Gray was running a post 
and Stanley wanted to just throw the go route because it seems like he was grabbed a little bit, his jersey's uh, hanging out, and that's something where up until this week, he really wasn't throwing to these guys. So he's only had a few days of getting used to it. Reggie Gray wasn't in that last series. He was out riding the bike, so his hamstring might be bothering him a little bit, so he wasn't able to kick it into gear and go get that ball as well. Jason Willis out to the right. Gray and Harper to the left. They'll put Gray in motion again on second and ten. Stanley looking left sideline. Rod Harper, touchdown, Sabercats. Rod Harper looked like he jumped out of the stands. He was so open at the five-yard line. Interesting, interesting. I'm watching Reggie Gray run his route. He ran about a 10-yard out route, and I was thinking Stanley was going to throw him the ball, and I go, well, this is going to be his first pick, and he lofted a nice ball over the corner. It looked almost like a cover two coverage, from, which would be cloud for Philadelphia, and right into the breadbasket of Rod Harper. And the nice thing is, when you have someone that open, do not miss him. Got to complete the one on none. Man, <laughs> the one on none, <laughs> I like that. And Stanley came through, Sabercats back up a touchdown. Nick Pertwee with the PAT. 21-14 San Jose with 10.50 remaining in the first half on KMBR 10.50. When someone you love is injured or sick, you should awesome. have to wait for hours. Wow, Thank that was easy. Hey, Bob, uh, I have a Rod Harper note with the okay. opportunity. Yeah, we'll do that coming right back from break. Okay. Offering the latest in technology and equipment. With CT, MRI, ultrasound, and x-ray on site, our team of highly experienced medical professionals offers only the best in patient care and service. At Santa Clara Urgent Care, we expedite your care and exceed your expectations. Sabercat fans, you know how to get loud when the team needs you, and now you can get loud for your business too. AdSemble.com is an online marketplace where you can bid the price you want to pay to advertise on high-definition digital billboards along Highway 101, Interstate 880, and even the Bay Bridge too. This exciting new form of advertising is sure to make your business stand out to the entire SF Bay area and at a cost that fits your budget. So, check it out today. AdSemble.com. That's AdSemble.com. Proud partners of your San Jose Sabercats. This is San Jose Sabercats football. Yep. 21 14, Sabercats on top with 10 50 remaining in the first half. And Nathan Stanley, the backup, getting the start here with Russ Mickna having the head injury a week ago, finding Rod Harper down the left sideline. Rod Harper from Murray State. Those are the racers. And he raced from midfield, <laughs> wide open. Kirsten Fairchild's Rod Harper is a nice add-on in one of the new Sabercats for this year. Yeah, you know, I asked Coach Arbet, who's been the biggest surprise this year? And he said, you know, Rod Harper is such a quiet guy. It's not until the coaching staff watches film that they see he's constantly beating people. He's so good on special teams that almost in live action, he goes a bit unnoticed, but I tell you, those two quarterbacks have the San Jose fans well aware that Rod Harper is wearing the green and gold this year. Yeah, I mean, he's gonna be unlucky 13 for DBs. If, yeah. you, if you see 13 yeah. and, <laughs> Run. And, you're, and you're watching him running past you, <laughs> you're, you're in trouble. And Harper is on special teams, as Kirsten mentioned. So Pertwee, a little right to left, boomerang line drive off the net. Red out of his own end zone at the five and spun down at the 11-yard line. And that was Huey Whitaker, and Simeon Castile, and Rod Harper all there for the tackle. So 21-14 San Jose. And I'm really waiting for Philadelphia to adjust their approach. They're very fortunate converting on a fourth down and getting a touchdown. But are they going to start going underneath or crossing routes or... As you said, Steve, are these these one-on-one, -on -one, almost like practice reps that they're just throwing downfield? Three-letter word, ego. That's your ego. You believe, hey, he's 35, we can beat him. I got young stallions, and sometimes you just got to do what's in the game plan. So Dan Radabaugh started 4 of 11, dropping back to pass, and there's the hookup underneath to McDaniel. He'll have a first down, get out right to midfield of the 25-yard line, and Whitaker knocking him down there. So that'll be a first down if Philadelphia moves it. Just getting under 10 minutes remaining in the first half with San Jose up 21-14. If I'm Dan Radabaugh, when I'm going over to Coach Dozell, the first thing I'm going to say to him is three-step. Three-step. Just keep it in his head because 
when he's taken three steps and gotten rid of the ball, he's had some success against the Sabercat defense. When he's taken five steps, he's not very good tonight. Larry Brackens, Tiger Jones to the right. Ryan McDaniel in motion. Give it to Ross up the middle. Cuts to the left of the 25. Fumble the ball. Fumble it forward to the 10. It's loose along the wall and a scrum at the 8-yard line. That ball may have changed hands. The Sabercats have recovered. Ross went down the sideline. He lost the ball. He kicked it forward. And then the Sabercats got to the wall and the ball with the recovery. Well, I'll tell you something that that does is that was a momentum changer for Philadelphia. That was a great run by Ross again. He had a chance to get down into the, to the uh, uh, red zone to fumble it and now to give it back to San Jose. You've changed the whole complexity of this game by fumbling that ball. Instead of a goal-to-go situation, mm -hmm. it's the Sabercats' second stop. It's our first turnover of the ball game. And San Jose takes over first and 10 at their own eights. Now there's 9.22 in the clock running here. When do we get into, because the timing rules change inside of a minute, but as an offensive coordinator, when you start looking at it, is it the five minute mark or the four minute mark? When you start to, to play with how you're gonna use clock? One minute. Coach Smith wants to score as many points as he can. He's not gonna worry about that until the one minute mark. One minute mark, all right. So on first down, Stanley with a flag down. He just hook up underneath the Huey Whitaker at the 12-yard line. And I think we have Philly offsides here. That is the call. Sabercats will take the free five and keep it at first down. Good move by the quarterback there, Stanley, changing up his snap count so they can't get a rhythm, can't just start teeing off on a motion guy. Now, does the quarterback tell guys that in the huddle, or will a lineman say, hey, you know what, they're coming pretty strong here. I mean, let's change this cadence a little both. bit. You, you get both in that, in that instant. So first and five, trips to the left. Sabercats of their own 13. And firing to Rod Harper at the 15 on a little hurricane screen. And Philly smelled that out a little bit. A gain out across the 16. That'll bring up second and short. And that right there was the, the youth and the inexperience of Rod Harper because what they tell you and what you should do are two different things. This, that was the hurricane screen outside to the, the most furthest receiver, and you're supposed to catch it with a step or two and then go straight up the field inside all your blocks. On that one, Harper could have cut it all the way back against the grain and probably scored because of the, the flow was coming to him, but when you're so used to being trained on getting up the field, you don't really feel it. You just do it. So now second down and two. Whitaker in motion right. Stanley dropping back, setting up the tight end screen. Firing to the 20, the 25, and a first down, and Rich Wranglin rumbling past midfield into Philly territory. I love it when the linemen catch the football because they get to go back and talk about it. But the thing is, Fitz, they talk about it extra. <laughs> that run right there, that catch and run was maybe 10 yards. That story will be about 30. Yeah. Uh, I caught it. I shook a guy. I bounced uh, off another guy. I was a block from taking <laughs> yeah. it to the house. Yes, yes. Those stories get amplified <laughs> from a lineman's perspective. It is a first down. Savory Cats first and 10 at the Philly 24, leading 21-14. Stanley stepping up in the pocket under pressure here. And Stanley will get to the 20-yard line. He dives head first. That's not a good recipe as Joe Gooseby landed on top of him, but Nathan Stanley appears to be okay. And a positive play, you know, get yeah. the five on yeah. first down, kind of keep things moving along a little bit. A negative that turned into a positive. He had Reggie Gray in the middle of the field and didn't pull the trigger quick enough, and that's something he's got to he'll, – he'll learn. He'll learn that when you're running that five route, which is about a 12-yard stop route, once he starts breaking down, to just throw the ball because you don't give the defensive back a chance to break on it, and you can tell by the cushion he's going to be open. You don't have to wait for him to be all the way open. So second and five at the Philly 20. Stanley looked right, and a dangerous pass. There's a flag on the play late back in the Sabercat backfield. Good break on the football that time by Whitehurst. And so let's wait on the infraction. We got roughing the passer at the end of that play. I didn't quite see that, to be honest. But the Sabercats are going to get a free first down. Got to move it further into Philly territory. They're going to put it at the 10-yard line. 
Yeah, and I didn't, I didn't see the, the roughing late. I was too busy looking at the receiver and the defensive back breaking on the ball, and that's one where he, he will learn in this game, Fitz, you don't have time to pump fake. You don't have time to hitch. You have to throw it or throw it away. And I know Coach Arbett and I know Coach Smith told him the same thing is if a guy isn't there, throw it away. We got four downs yeah, to get a that, first Yeah, that's down. the whole key. <laughs> Nothing wrong with second and ten, third and ten. A pick, there's a problem there. So first and goal at the ten-yard line. Trips to the right. Nathan Stanley pumping once into the end zone. Touchdown, Huey Whitaker. Stanley very composed in the pocket. The old line protection has been outstanding. And the Sabercats double up Philadelphia with the PAT on the way. Wow, great route by Huey Whitaker. They, they say Huey Whitaker isn't the greatest route runner or the fastest receiver, but, I mean, all he does is get open. He reminds me of a James Rowe. I mean, right there he comes in, and he's going to shake Kaiser like he's going to go to the out route and then comes back. And, I mean, Kaiser completely spins around. And good throw and catch by Stanley to Huey Whitaker. And so Nick Pertwee. Come on for the PAT here. Low snap, set down, and the kick is up and good. That's a great job by Willis holding that football. It saved a point as they field to the ground ball. 28-14, Sabercats on top, 5-13 remaining in the first half. And how about Nathan Stanley? A rushing touchdown. He's thrown for three more touchdowns. And the Sabercats with the two-touchdown lead and a timeout on the field on KMBR 1050. Johnny was born different. His right foot made solely of atomic number 82, lead. With his lead foot, Johnny went on to excel at many things. Kickball, soccer, swimming, not so much. But his true calling was electric go-karting at K1 speed. Johnny could hit speeds of 40 miles per hour, leaving everyone else in the dust. Well, except the kid with the plutonium foot. K1 speed! Mariani's Inn and Restaurant is the perfect destination for business or pleasure. Mariani's Inn has been providing high quality lodging and dining in a relaxing home-like atmosphere. Mariani's Restaurant specializes in Italian and American cuisine. Come to the bar for happy hour and enjoy live entertainment on Friday and Saturday nights. Mariani's also caters off-site events so they can bring the delicious bounty to your location. Come to Mariani's where you're treated like family. 10 seconds. Visit www.mariani's.com for information about everything Mariani's Mariani's has to offer. Mariani's Inn and Restaurant, a Santa Clara tradition. You dialed into San Jose Sabercats football. 5-13 remaining in the first half. The Sabercats on top 28-14. And Nathan Stanley in place of Russ Mikta. Mikta with the head injury. Now, how many times do you think you had a concussion when you played? Oh, too many to count. Yeah, I, I really do. But back then, you really didn't know about it as much. And being a competitor, you probably had one and go, nah, I'm still going to play as long as I'm not throwing up or nause nauseated. And would you play with headaches and yeah. double vision and stuff? Yeah. Wow. Because I was worried about James Rowe or James Hunt and taking my position if I set out. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Nick Pertwee kicking off low off the net. That's a live football. It bounces in the end zone. Red picks it up. And then he is bounced down at the four-yard line by David Highland. You know, there's really an art to the way Pertwee can put it on the net, move it around. You take for granted kicking, but in the arena game, you need the PATs because mm -hmm. you score touchdowns, got a match. You need, with only a nine-foot wide opening, to be comfortable that the guy can make a short field goal. He can. And most importantly, it begins your defense and your special teams as he puts it off the net. Yeah, guys fits that put it off high or put it off in the middle every time. A, a returner gets comfortable. A guy like Pertui puts it low, puts it high, puts it inside, outside, because the ball comes off different if it's inside the bar or outside. Radabaugh at his own four-yard line. Under center. And a little screen out to Brackens. Full head of steam and then knocked down quickly by Fontenet. That was a play where it started to look like Larry Brackens was going to eat up big-time real estate. And Fontenet a good tackle to drop him at the 15. That's one thing about this Sabercat secondary. They all can tackle. They are very good tacklers. They take pride in tackling, and that's why I reference the Seahawks. I don't refer reference them because 6-4 or Super Bowl, but because they're physical. All three of these guys like to tackle because Brackens isn't a little guy, and Fontenet went right at him. Yeah, 6'5", 225, yeah. <laughs> full head of steam. Three wide receivers to the right on first and 10. Radaba looking right sideline. And the flag will fly on a Highland. He impeded Ryan McDaniel while the ball was in the air. 
wouldn't have made a difference. Wouldn't have made a difference. I mean, I, they got to call that one, but that was great coverage outside anyway. So that will be a first down on the pass interference. So first and 10, Philadelphia at their own 20. Inside four minutes here, running clock until the final minute. Then the clock will stop on timeouts and out of bounds plays, incompletions. Managing the clock and the opportunity become critical. As the Sabercats will get the ball to start the second half. Right about a go route. Finally hits McDaniel, and he does come up with a touchdown. So Ryan McDaniel ran underneath it perfectly. And right about laid it out there, and they beat Cleveland Thomas. That does not happen often, but they got him one time. What is that saying? Even a broke clock is right twice a day? <laughs> and that's exactly what that looked like because it looked like that ball was going to sail a little bit on Radabaugh again, and McDaniels just sped up and got there. But Cleveland was right there again. I mean, that had to be a perfect throw. And I guess when you try it enough, one, you're going to get one here or there. So Carlos Martinez on for the PAT. and trying to make it a one-touchdown game again. Good snap and set. And no good. Missed it off to the left. We talked about how you need to match in an eight-point game. Yes, you have the two-point conversion, but that becomes a real problem by missing a PAT. See, and the thing about the, the two-point game in arena football is the end zones are so small. You're, gonna, you're, you're condensed to where you need to be, but the difference that Philadelphia has in their two-point strategy, they have Ross. So their run game comes into play pretty well with, with, with them. So not a big deal, but what it does, Fitz, is it breaks your momentum. It doesn't seem like it, but your momentum or guys put their head down a little bit when you do miss. 28-20 Sabercats, 252 remaining in the first half. Timeout on the field on KMBR 1050. When someone you love is injured or sick, you should Bob, I have a note about how kickers in general practice in the offseason. Okay. Without the long waits of emergency room visits, Santa Clara Urgent Care is a state-of-the-art facility offering the latest in technology and equipment. With CT, MRI, ultrasound, and x-ray on site, our team of highly experienced medical professionals offers only the best in patient care and service. At Santa Clara Urgent Care, we expedite your care and exceed your expectations. In between this. Steps back, goes up, got fouled, and banked it all! Curry! And this. This, this is as good as it gets. Tim and Tom talk. Uh, come back to me here. It's like that ball's a yo-yo. Well, that time the yo-yo came off the finger. He was trying to walk the dog, and the dog took off. <laughs> come back. Tim and Tom. That is very impressive yo-yo trick knowledge right there. <laughs> Bringing you all the action from Oracle on KNBR 680. This is San Jose Sabercats football. Nope. David Highland fielding it off the net, getting out to the 15-yard line. That's where the Sabercats will set up shop, leading 28-20. And Kirsten Fairchild, we were talking about Nick Pertwee and kickers in the Arena League, and their training methods a little bit different. Yeah, we just saw that miss by um, Carlos Martinez right there, and I had a chance to talk to Nick Pertwee, who he's teaching online classes still at this moment for Montana State University. Well, not this moment, but this semester. And I asked him, how do you practice at any other level of football? You can you know, find a high school field, practice kicking, but with the dimensions of the goalpost, he said you kick at street lamps. You find a street lamp, you try to nail it, and uh, obviously more difficult than at any other level. Stanley misfiring on first down, high and incomplete into the secondary. So if you happen to live on a cul-de-sac or a street <laughs> where Pertwee is around and he's kicking at street lamps, that's, that's a little different. <laughs> If you're walking down the street and you don't, and it's out, <laughs> you know who's been on your street. If your street lamp is, is out and there's That's no right. light. Nick Pertwee starting a crime spree, knocking out street <laughs> lamps in entire neighborhoods over and over with his accuracy. So a minute and a half remaining in the first half. Second and 10. Sabercats at their own 15, leading 28-20. Trips to the right. Willis in motion right. Nathan Stanley with a flag down on the play, looking deep down the field and just overthrows Reggie Gray. Gray was behind the defense. And we will wait on the hanky here. This could be an illegal defense on Philadelphia. That will be the call. 
So it will stay second down, but Sabercats pick up some yardage here. And if you're Philadelphia, you had a third down play where you roughed the passer and gave San Jose a first down. This would have been a third and ten illegal procedure on offsides gives them second and five. And when you're playing good teams like the Sabercats and you're 0-1 and you've already lost Arizona and you need a win, you got to play smart. You have to play within yourself and not keep giving San Jose opportunities because I guarantee you they will capitalize on them. All right, we get to the one-minute warning. Sabercats have the ball, leading by eight. And we will get to the new timing rules at the one-minute warning. Timeout on the field with San Jose up 28-20 on KMBR 1050. Brian Murphy here. Let me talk to you about my good friends at BMW of Fremont and BMW of Mountain View. Really excited about the new 2014 BMW 328D. And that D stands for diesel. Oh my God. That means you're going to get the power and the performance you expect from a BMW 3 Series with the unmatched efficiency of a diesel engine all for just $349 a month plus tax. Yeah, you got it. A new BMW 328D with an EPA estimated 45 MPG highway for just $349 a month plus tax. It's clean diesel. It's clearly better. And now it's clearly affordable. Go take the new 328D for a test drive at BMW of Fremont and BMW of Mountain View. 36-month lease, 3136 cash due from customer, plus $500 eco credit and $1,250 optional allowance for $4,886, plus government fees and taxes due at signing. Zero security deposit, 10,000 miles per year, 20 cents per excess mile with approved seconds. credit through BMW Financial Services. Offer expires at the end of the month. KNBR 1050. All the sports talk you will ever need. KTCT San Mateo. A cumulus station. This is San Jose Sabercats football. Yep. One minute remaining in the first half. Sabercats have the ball. Second and five of their own 20, leading 28 to 20. And Pap, all right, you said a minute left. Now the clock's going to stop out of bounds and completions, timeouts. How does Omar Smith handle the play calling here? He's going to want to get points. What he's going to try and do is try and make Philadelphia use their timeout somehow, some way, so, that, so they can get the ball back. But what he's going to do is he's just going to let his quarterback play. He's not going to put too much pressure on him without changing his offense. And so second and five. Three wide receivers to the right. Stanley dropping back, dumping it underneath. It's caught, and then Harper ran backwards and then forward, got the first down. It is down to the Philly 23. Now we'll see if Philadelphia is going to use some timeouts here. And they will. So that is timeout number one by Philly. And there's something that I, you know, I, I talked about earlier was the ego. Early on, and I don't know which one of the, the coaches over there uh, is Coach Dozell's defensive guy, Rod Miller, Steve Criswell, or Phil Bogle. But early on, his defensive guy was on the field calling the defense. Now he's taken over calling the defense in the middle of a game. And I really don't like that because that's your ego. That's if that's the case, your offense has been struggling as well. So worry about what you do. You've hired guys to come in and coach and do what they, they're supposed to do. Don't take it over because you figure this is something, a crucial point. Let your guys coach. Well, also, too, how do you put that genie back in the bottle is that if you're the D coordinator, it's taken away from you all the time. Stanley dropping back to pass on first down, looking deep into the end zone for Reggie Gray. A sliding grab. Touchdown. He caught it and then smashed into the wall and held on to the football. That was a great catch. Great catch, great throw. Great job by Reggie Gray. The one thing about Reggie Gray, I watched him in practice and I've seen him over the last couple of years, is he makes his moves at 100 miles an hour. He doesn't, when he goes to cut or break at the top of his route, he's still running 100 miles an hour. And Stanley put the ball where only Reggie was going to catch it. And Kaiser is having a rough day, the defensive back for the Philadelphia Soul so far. So the Sabercats score with 45 ticks left. Good snap and set, and Pertwee's kick maintains now the 15-point lead. And so 45 seconds left. Philly had to use one of the timeouts. And so we get into that chess match of two for one, and how do you score? Did San Jose onside kick here? Well, I think normally you would, but with, with – and, and, and they still might because you figure Ross is going to run the ball in, San Jose is going to call timeouts and get it back. I personally would kick it deep for the simple fact they've struggled on offense. I would take my chances that Philadelphia is going to keep trying to throw long balls and, and not complete passes, and I would, I would kick it deep here. But I, I think 
you're going to get the typical onside kick and play two for one. Yeah, and, that, and you know San Jose also is looking at getting the ball first to start the second half. So I mean, this really, you know, you don't door slam something at halftime in an arena game. But if you were to get up again and get the ball and really put them in a chase position, that's where the Sabercats are at their best. Yep, and then what starts creeping in the back of the soul's mind is, oh, that's a long plane ride home. Oh, God, this is going to be a long. And then that's when your, your offense and your defense starts taking control of this game. That's why in this situation, I understand the onside kick, but I've always said it fits. If, if you're going to do it, do the dribbler. Because if you kick an onside kick and it goes past the 10-yard line, they can get a first down. So you'll run out of timeouts, and they'll still be able to keep the ball. Kick it with inside the 10-yard line, which only guarantees Philadelphia four plays, three timeouts, you win. So now Pertwee coming up, and it is the dribble kick. It is bouncing and then picked up by Brackens. There's a flag down. Brackens recovered it at the 12-yard line. Is this an offside? I didn't think it was a legal touching because it went clean to Brackens. This might have been an offsides on San Jose or a blocking on Philadelphia illegal. Oh, low block on Philly. So the Sabercats, they, they didn't want to push Philadelphia back 10 yards? No. Because now where the ball, the ball, he actually, it should be spotted about the 12. He put it at the 13. But now if you push them back 10 yards, they can get two first downs, okay. which will stop the clock. So that's why Coach Walker says, okay, getting the first down inside the three-yard line, we're going to take our chance. So this is one of those deals where the Sabercats are playing to get the ball back yes. right before the half. 43 seconds left. You're going to get something. You might get a run here or something quick because what Philly's going to do is try and make San Jose use their timeouts before they score. McDaniel in motion left. Radaba, a little dump off to Derek Ross at the 12-yard line. Breaks a tackle to the 5. Ross is brought down at the 4. Now he's short of the first down. And the Sabercats are going to have to use the timeout or not. It's at 30 seconds and running. And now finally the timeout. It's funny you use that analogy brought down. I think Ross went down. That's that strategy. He could have scored there. He caught the screen, gets inside, but he saw the first down marker, and what he did is he bought his team an extra possession because now the, uh, Philadelphia is probably going to run it, not get the first down, let San Jose call a timeout, then run it, get the first down. They'll call it again. Now they're going to have second, third, and fourth and down to score here. without no timeouts. So you have a situation here where Philly is trying to score, make it 35-27 at the half. They want to play keep away, make sure San Jose never touches the ball again. And that's exactly why Coach Walker's a little upset because he figured some clock ran, uh, some time ran off the clock while he was trying to get a timeout. And I knew exactly what they were going to do there. And everybody, I mean, it's, it's the chess match. It's at some point here, if you're Coach Walker, you might allow Philadelphia just to score so your team can get your offense and get the ball back. But again, I guarantee you Coach Dozell over there told them, go down. Do not score. So second and one from the four-yard line. Ross is the fullback. They give it to him at the five. He does not get a first down. Get down to 23 seconds now. And the Sabercats will use their second timeout. And he didn't really want the first down there. He could care less. They, they need it, but they're going to get two chances to get six inches. After this one, San Jose would be out of timeout. You'd look for Coach Dozell to let it run down a little bit, maybe use a timeout of his own with about 12 seconds. That way he has about two plays in that time frame, which guarantees San Jose won't see the ball. All right, so Philly takes time. We will as well. 35-20 on KMBR 1050. More tech, more deals, more savings. Hey, are you Surprise ready for a long Wait, halftime to show? Com deals to see hundreds of great tech items. So, Bob, I'll have Darren again before the Right, I know that. Computer, okay. laptop, um, tablet, or smartphone. And you, will you have a halftime show there? Like uh, sports, was, sports update? Surprised. Yeah, I was going to do about a two, 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 two and a half to three minute sports update. Yeah, longer the better. Okay, sounds good. All right, come back to us right after this. Six gigabytes of memory, no spacious one terabyte hard drive. Get yours now. And Fry's, guaranteed low price of $578. Visit Fry's today. And see the stylish Asus notebook with Intel Core i5 processor. It has a crystal clear touch screen with 13.3 inch display, making it perfect for work in laptop mode or for entertainment in the unique stand mode. It comes with four 
gigabytes of memory and a 128 gigabyte solid state drive. Now it fries. Guaranteed low price of $998. More tech, more deals, and more savings at fries.com slash deals. Guaranteed. KNBR 1050. So Derek Ross gets the first down, gets down to the three-yard line. Sabercats use their final timeout with 17 seconds left. And now it's about just trying to stop Philadelphia. I wouldn't have used it. I would have thought to I would have thought, and here again, I'm up here with you in the booth, so I'm not questioning Coach Arbet or nothing, but the mentality that I look at is I don't call timeout. Dozell might assume I'm calling one and let, let run off a few seconds. And then what I do if I'm Coach Walker is I bring over my eight guys and I go, if you want to get to the promised land and you want to get to the arena bowl, we need to stop. And now you, you challenge Philadelphia from two yards out to get a score on your team. If they do, so what? You get it at halftime. No big deal. But I, I, I think you challenge your, your group. I mean, you know who's getting the ball. So are they going to give it to Ross at the three? They give it to him up the middle. He goes nowhere. So the Sabercats... They hold, and now Dozell will use a timeout with seven seconds left. It's getting a little nervous for Philadelphia. I mean, you can fool around with the clock all you want. At some point, you need to score. Well, what's going to get interesting, Fitz, is you should have called that at about nine or ten seconds. Seven seconds gets you a play. If you're going to throw, get rid of it. But the question is, is if you run and you don't get in, you call timeout with a second or two. Where's your chess match? What are you going to do? Do you already know you're going for the touchdown, or are you sitting there saying, hey, seven seconds, we'll throw for the end zone. If we don't get it, we'll kick. And that's where coaches lose their, 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 their focus is you got to have one move ahead of the next. If you call timeout, do you have a two-play plan to score a touchdown or a one play to get in and then kick the field goal? And I think coaches lose sight of that. Now, are they running the ball here with one timeout left, or are they going to throw it? That's – that's what I was talking about. You got Ross. I would assume you would run it and then give yourself three or four seconds to maybe throw it in. But again, if you're going to throw it, I'd have let it. I'd have waited to two seconds. First and goal at the two-yard line. They give it to Ross, running right, and he is brought down. Brought down back at the two. David Highland came across. Billy's got to use the timeout with two seconds left, and now this will be the last play of the half. 